Hello and welcome to Reflections. I'm your girl Nadine Edwards. Thank you for joining. I hope as you listen today, you'll be inspired, uplifted, motivated in your continued pursuit of becoming a better version of yourself. If you have not already done so, be sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you liked today's episode, please remember to like, leave a comment and share it with your friends and family. Today, I have another guest with me, someone I met while living in the US, California to be specific. When I met this woman for the first time, we immediately connected and as time went by, we kept in touch. And for every time we had a conversation, I always walked away feeling refreshed and reminded that God is indeed faithful. He hears and answers prayer and when we need him the most, he always comes through. I have heard several of this lady's life experiences and there's one particular story that I've heard about two or three times and as she shares today I hope someone will be blessed by her story. I speak of none other than Veronica Strandberg. Welcome Veronica and thank you for taking the time to share one of your life experiences with us today. You know every time I talk with you I always get a little jealous and say God loves you more than me because the way God comes through for you in your life's journey, it just makes me a little jealous in a good way. <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Thank you, Nadine. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me and thank you for allowing me to share this powerful story. I particularly wanted to share this story. I don't know on what forum I would have done it, whether in the form of a book or an audio or some big stage or in a movie, but the, the reason why I want to share this story is just to highlight God. Right. It's just to let people know how real God is, how good God is. And let me tell you, he will come to your rescue. He will defend you. Now, I must put this disclaimer. At the time when this incident happened, I was at my lowest ebb in my walk with God. I wasn't in sync with his way. But I never never turn my back on God totally. I don't know. God has God has favored me. That's all I can say. So today you're going to share with us how your daughter was kidnapped and there was a contractor who was sent to, to get your daughter, but he kidnapped the wrong daughter. And now right. you're going to share with us how God intercepted that. Yes. And so it was the in the summer, August 30 to be exact. I was going about my business. It was holiday, of course. And the kids were at home. My, I have three three children. My son, who is he's the eldest one, and I have two daughters. Now the middle child, she's the one who it was intended for, but it got to the smaller one. The smaller one was the one who it really caught. Okay. Right. So it was time for school fees to be paid. So I went to the bank before I went to work, and got the monies. Took it back home to my daughter to have the school fees paid. So I said, okay, because she was at university at the time. The other one was at prep school and the bigger one who was working, he was also in school. And I said, okay, get this money and pay the school fees. But what you're going to do, you're going to take the smaller one, take your sister that she can have an idea how to do a transaction at the bank. She was not feeling well, so she didn't go. So she left her sleeping. So I went about my business at about one o'clock. I can't forget Nadine. At about one o'clock that day, that Thursday, 30th of August, 2006, I just left a client, heading back to another client. So I went into the parking lot to drive to my other client and I got the call from my youngest child. Um, Mom, I said, oh, um, what's up? Um, I'm okay, but a man took me broke in the house and I said what then I only hear a dial tone mm. and then I screamed I screamed I screamed I screamed and when I screamed the security at the at the parking lot he came to look but I by this time I went in my car locked the door and I screamed and I screamed and I screamed I called my elder I called my one of my friends and I called her father and I drove from there. What am I going to do now? What am I going to do? I don't know. But I drove and I drove and I cried. And I trust me, the Holy Spirit steered that car. Because I don't even know what I was doing. I needed to move from 
where I was to get back home. But I mean, I was just so confused. How could this be me? How could this be my child? I drove the police academy, Spanish town. I stopped there because I knew a lot of persons there. Right. And I remember I went to this police officer. She was my client and I was telling her and I cried and I cried and I cried. And she, you know, she called other colleagues and I was telling them the, um, what happened. And I rested there for a while because I had a friend who came, who heard about it. She said, don't go any further. Just stay right there. So she came and picked me up. So she, she drove me home. And then on entering my avenue, the crowd that I saw, Mm. It's, it's like a funeral. I just started to scream again. In the yard, people, co-workers, neighbors, I mean, everybody you can think of. And um, the police were there and they, they took me inside. They asked me what kind of child it was because they want to know. I think they want to establish if she was a child who, you know, will leave the home without anybody. No, I said, no, she's nothing like that. So let me ask, Not, did they, and, they ask you about any suspicions of who you think might have done this? At the time, I told them, no, they did. Because I, I, I really didn't know. Right. So, you know, they took all the statements. And by this time, my daughter, before that though, backing up a little, my daughter who went to pay the school fees, I called her also. And she went straight into the police station and told them that her sister is kidnapped. And she met the right policeman who came immediately. And that was a policeman who was working all along on the case. God is so good. And when I look back, Nadine, in every aspect right. of my life, right. every aspect right. of my life, God was leading me. Right. Because he, he was placing me in, in places where I would need people who I didn't know. Right. You mentioned earlier that there was a confession by the kidnapper that he he kidnapped the wrong daughter. And you mentioned that the daughter left out that day and was to turn back. Share with us that scene. Right. So before, before, before the kidnapping took place, my daughter, who, that's the elder one, who would be um, paying the school fees, doing a transaction at the bank. While she was leaving now, she said it, the sun was very hot and she wanted to turn back for an umbrella. She doesn't like to go out when it's sunny. Right. And she said, she said, she stand up and she look in the sky and she said, Lord, should I go back for the umbrella? And she said, she just forget the umbrella. And she went and took a taxi. So, the, so you mentioned that you, you had instructed her to take her sister. So the sister didn't go because she wasn't feeling well. It did not go because she wasn't feeling well. And the man was watching the house all this time. The man watching the house. The man told me that I don't know how I did not see her because it's not this one I wanted, it was her. And I knew if I had her, it would be bloody because she would resist and fight and I would have to kill her. And so the police questioned us and I, I got a call in the night, the same night that I'm to have this money for release of my daughter. Which is a lot of money. Don't worry, your daughter will be safe. I want this money. You, When you get the money, I'm going to call it back in the morning. He calls me back. Do you have the money? Okay, you leave it here. No police, no camera, no news people, nothing. That's, I'm just repeating his words verbatim. I said, okay. I remember taking out everything out of my car, leaving the car empty. I remember I had a sneaker on, a pair of sneakers, because I was prepared to fight that day. Mm. I had a small knife. I don't know what that could have done. A small knife in my pocket. And by the way, he told me what he wanted out of the house. He wants a computer, printer. He wants a camera. He wants some phones. So I packed everything that he wanted in the trunk. And he told me where to leave it. This had to be somebody who knew you. This had to yeah. be somebody who, who is offended by something that you said or can't be a stranger. That's what I say to Nadine. Because it's personal now. It's getting personal. Right. right. And police instructed me not to pay any monies because after 24 hours, they usually kill. So don't pay any money. I remember I looked at the officer and said, respectfully, this is my daughter and I'm going to do whatever I can do. And God is not going to allow her to die. And I said, the shoe is on my feet now, officer. 
It's not your feet. It's my feet. I understand what you're saying. And he said, well, if you pay, we can't go any further. And I remember one of the police said to me, she's a female. She said, I will go with you, but I'm going to lay down in the car. And I remember driving on the road. He was on the phone with me. He said, yes, I'm seeing you. I'm seeing you. Okay, just leave it right there. But I, I can't see anybody. It's Manchester, so it's hilly, you know, a lot of hilly terrain. What time of day so, was? What time, I mean? evening, what time of evening or day it was when you were making your way to it was about it, it was about, I would say it's about one o'clock, two, thereabout. In the afternoon, okay. Yeah. And by the time I get everything ready, he said, yes, I see you. Leave it right there. And so... I leave it right there. The police was in the car, laying down. The car was tinted, so he couldn't see who was in the car. And he hung from me. I said, okay, I'm going to call you back to tell you where your daughter is. Nadine, no call. No call for about 15 minutes. No call. And the police in at the back of the car, she, she called back the station and she was relating the message to the officers and said, that is why we told her not to pay. Okay. I want for you to describe your emotions and your feelings at this point. When this guy said he would call you back and you're hearing nothing and you're in, you're at a spot where this guy's watching you and anything can happen at any time. How did you feel? I am driving and all I'm seeing is blackness. That's all I'm seeing, blackness. And I remember hearing the police in the car. Oh, I had my, my other daughter in the car with me. Was really? Buggy. No police, yeah. My other daughter was in the car with me. And she's and, and I remember the police was talk when the police was talking to the other police at the station. I lift I wind the window down and I lift up my hands and I was driving and I said, I know God is not going to allow to kill her. I know that. So I was refuting what she was telling the officers that the, the child might have been dead. Oh, I drove and I drove and I cried and I cried and I called on God. And I said, God, you are not going to allow her to die. You have to believe what you need. And I, I heard the phone rang and he said, yes, you can go. She is right where you live. Just go and search in the bushes. Now, where I was living at the time, Nadine, there is a mine-out area, bauxite area, mine-out bauxite area. So it has a lot of precipice, a lot of bushes. You know, it's just, there's no vehicle, nothing. It's not a road. It's just road for the bauxite vehicles. Right. Returning residents were coming back to build their houses with their, with all the monies that they have worked over the years to live. So the, the area was still being developed. Exactly. And I remember my son came home by this and he heard that she was released and where she was. And let me tell you, the police and my son, they went and the entire community went looking for her, searching. So the police said, we could not find her. I heard her, mommy, because she said she heard my voice. And she said, mommy, but I hear an echo. It was a, like an echo. And I called her name. But I could not see anything because of the thick shrubs and the, the bushes. So the police said, shake the branch where you are. Shake the branch. So we saw something shaking. And it was there. My son went down. Went, dropped down in a precipice. Come out again and go. It was far and again. It was because the area is wide. And he got her and I remember he lifted her up in his arms and he was crying and I took her. And I remember Nadine, I knelt down in the road and I said, God, mm. I, I, I can't tell you. I knelt down like how David knelt down with my head down to the ground, Nadine. Yeah. I said, thank you, Jesus. I said, thank you, Jesus. I mean, everybody was crying. When I see, when I look at the officers, they were crying. Mm. They turned, they, they couldn't believe she was alive. Right. They couldn't believe she was alive. And I thank God that he came through. Right. How did the break-in happen now with him coming after you now? What happened? 
then there was a second scenario. So that ran off for a couple of Nadine, I was not impressed to move. Was were you advised to move? Yes. After the kidnapping, the police were ad- No, the police did not advise me to move. He said to me, lightning doesn't strike at the same time twice. But within my spirit, I was not impressed to move. I had just bought the house. I was not holding on. I just did not get the nudge to move. Right. I was afraid, but not at the point to move. I remember my family, they were overseas and they called me and said, you need to leave the house. And I was just not impressed. But I remember one scripture that was what I repeated night and day. And it is, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and love sound mind because when you're when your mind is engulfed in fear you can't think straight right. you can't hear the voice of god you, you, you can't pray you become paranoid you, be, you become paranoid yes. i wanted to have a clear mind and i remember i did what i had to do i put security on there's a security company that i paid for i put them on i put security on alarm on the house okay I and that's a good security company by the way I, but in jamaica what i did during that period though i must tell you i came home very early so i started to come home very early okay because sometimes i work very late and lightning struck again in the next six weeks hmm. <laughs> nadine i'm telling you each time i remember this i have to say god I thank you. Just thankfulness, gratitude. So and I remember I went to work. It's a Thursday. The first incident was August. The other incident was October. So I went to work, came home, pick up my daughter from school. No, by this time she left school. So she would stay at her teacher's house with my church sister. Mm. So pick her up. And I picked up my other daughter who was going to university. Her classes were finished. Sometimes she had um, night classes. So I would pick her up from campus and I drove home. We were happy. We were all in the car going home. We were happy and we were singing and we were driving home. We went home. And the first thing though, as I entered the house, that was the only night I wasn't afraid. The night before, I went home late and I was a little paranoid. Okay. And what, what, so that paranoia. After so all it, these weeks, the night before. I think it was late and then we had a power cut. Okay. So I asked, I called the security company and I asked them to send somebody to escort me home. Hmm. So they came, they went in, they searched the place. Everything was good. Okay. So the first thing we took up the telephone to see if there was a tone. Because the first incident, the, the man had cut the, the telephone line. Everything was in order that night. The following night now, I went home. I was so happy, da, da, da. And we went in. I just showered, went to bed. I usually turn on the television. We didn't even turn on television. And we did not search the house. The night before, every other night, we used to search. We did not search. We were so happy. We went home. We, we ate. We went straight to bed. Let me tell you, while I was driving home, I had a church sister with me on the line so she was uh, you know on the phone with me until we reached home and that night in particular i i have another friend a very close friend of mine he's a client he's a licensed firearm holder so i asked him if he could stay at the house with us he was planning to stay but then something happened and he said he could not come Mm. god did it because this is god's business Again, God. Right. And I remember Nadine, we went to bed and I was awakened by somebody covering my face and holding something at my throat. The, the one that was kidnapped, the smaller one, she did not sleep in her room anymore. She started sleeping with me. But the other two, they had exams coming up, so they were studying. But my daughter, the elder one, she always sleep with an earphone. Mm. She loves music and she always, there's always an earphone in our ears. I see it on movies too. When they just strike, they don't even know. 
When she finished study, she said as she was going to bed, she turned off the earphone. That's how she heard the screaming. By this time, the man attacked me and there was a struggle and still in Nadine. I, I was, he had his face covered and I was saying to myself, this, this must be somebody I know. Why yeah. do I have the face covered? And I was there trying to take off this and he was, he held the knife at my throat. But how did you I, struggle with the knife at your throat? How did you, what did you do? Nadine, I don't know what happened. I was screaming that my son could hear and get up. That's what I was doing. Right. <laughs> houses in that community, they're far apart. Right. So nothing. I had a buzzer that one of my friends bought for me that I could, it's an alarm. So I could just set an alarm and it would alert people. I couldn't even reach for that. But a struggle and still with me and the man. And somehow I got the knife from him, Nadine, and he ran and I ran him down. And I remember he cornered me. It was the back of the house in the washroom. He cornered me there. After he cornered me there, he took up the machete because he said he's going to kill me. My daughter, that's the middle one. But before that, back up, he turned off the breaker. Which controls the light in the house. So the light. So he did that before he attacked me. And my daughter saw because the house was in darkness. So there's a street light that shines right through the kitchen because I'm living on a hill. She saw the shadow went up. She saw his hand went up and she went and she covered my head. So she got the chop right on her hand. Almost seven. Oh my goodness. Almost seven. She used her hand and she covered my head. But he wanted me to go outside because he said he has friends out there that is coming to pick us up. And he, he said he, he wanted this larger sum of money now. So he's going to take me away and my son is to get the money. So he's going to leave my son. By this time, while I was shouting and screaming, Nadine, I didn't know that my son was tied up, strapped down on his bed. I'm visualizing the entire scene. It's like I'm watching a movie. It was when the struggle ceased now and I surrendered. He took me in my son's room and I saw my son, the eye water was coming down. He was gagged, tied up head to foot and strapped down on the bed. This is an experienced person. He put me on the bed to sit. He said, sit there. And he tied me up and he put a bullet in my mouth. He said, bite it. That's what you're going to feel tonight. How did you feel in this moment now? Nadine, to be honest with you, at that point in time, definitively, I don't know if God was going to come through. But I was, each moment, okay, one minute is gone. It's, I was just counting down the minutes for daylight. Because this took place about, I would say about 12. I remember he tied me up so I couldn't walk. He lifted me up and he threw me, he took me to the living room area and he threw me down on the floor. He tied me again. My hands to my feet and I was there worried about my daughters and my son and by this time he take the gag off my son's mouth and my son was there saying my mother's a good woman don't hurt her please just just do what, whatever you want to do with me don't hurt my mother and he was trying to calm him down Nadine I was on the floor and I drew out every promise that I know in the Bible. I said, God, you said, in my heart, I said, God, you said when I pass through the waters, you will be with me. And through the rivers, it will not overflow me. And then I was quarreling again with God. I said, God, you say you're God. Oh, you can't show somebody what is happening to come to my rescue, God, please. And I was then leaning, so I was between and betwixt with God. I was quarreling with God and I was joined on his promises. I was, I, I don't know what was happening. Confusion, fear, and anxiety. Then I remember him saying to my daughter, that's the elder one, the man said to her, because- She was bleeding, she was still bleeding. I, she was bleeding. I was, remember, I when I ran him down in Aladdin, I took that knife and I was stabbing off him so I apparently catch him. And he was saying, your mother, she's bad. Look how she cut me. I'm going to kill her tonight. And my daughter de-escalated him. And she said, if someone came in your house and attacked your children, what would you do? She's smart. 
because from you told me that she went to the police station. She she's and, she's mature. She has your back. And she and I was worried about her too because she's asthmatic and that can be triggered by stress, anxiety. Mm-hmm. So I was just praying that she would not. And I remember he took up all the phones. She was tied up with you too. She was not tied up because she was bleeding. Oh. So he didn't tie. She was the only one who was not tied up. I see. So she kicked one of the phones that he, he put all the phones on the floor and all the, 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 the buzzer and everything for the house, the security. And she kicked it, took one of the phone and went into the room where my other daughter was crying. And he said, yes, man, keep her. Keep, she, she's making too much noise. Keep her quiet. And she called the police. Now, the, that phone was a phone that had all the numbers of the police. It was one of the cheapest phone I had. He said he didn't want that phone. It was a peanut phone. You know that they say in Jamaica, the cheap peanut phone. I had one of those. Also. He underestimated the power of that phone in that moment. Nadine, my daughter called the police because we had their straight numbers. I remember my daughter came and she used her foot to touch me because I was on the floor and she said it quietly. Mommy, you will be okay. I called the police. She whispered it, of course. Nadine was like a ton came off my head. It was like a the, the, the house was on my head and look at, it's like somebody lifted the house off my head. I believe you. And I looked at her because I couldn't talk. My mouth was, was gagged. I looked at her. I said, seriously? She said, mommy, you'll be fine. And it was like the police came in minutes. I mean, minutes. It's like, <laughs> you know, some animated show you're watching. The, you know, you'll see somebody just appear. Within minutes, Nadine, I saw the police the siren coming. We could not figure how the man came in the house because the house was locked, just as I left it in the morning. And the buzzer was on the house. And the security came because they left a note to say they came and everything was okay. Then we saw him went up into the attic and the police were there trying to get into the house. But because we were scared, my daughter was scared to open and he was saying, don't open. All of this is going to die tonight. So my daughter said to him, go back the same way you came in the house. Go back the same way. And that's how we knew he went right back in the attic. So there was a compromised era in the attic then? He took a roof, the sheeting off the roof and came down in the attic. I see. It's a trap door, you know. Most houses have a trap door. So that's how he came in. He didn't enter through any doors or windows he came from the roof so that's why the alarm did not go off right and he hid under the bed that's where he was so when we got in the house the man was in the house he told us he was in the house all day he watched tv he ate and he was just waiting on us (laughs) it sounds funny (laughs) that's That's the movie i'm watching That was his last meal. I wonder what he had for his last meal. This man is really presumptuous. And do you think it's the same man who kidnapped your daughter in the first place? Yes. Okay. yes. By then, did you have any suspicion as to who this might be and who he is connected with? I had a suspicion, but I'm not going to mention it. Okay. So by this time, he went up in the roof and they killed him up in the roof. How did they get into the house? And how did they know that he was in the roof? My daughter, who was not tied and was bleeding profusely, she held up and she was there flickering the light because when the police were knocking, nobody was answering. They could have left. And because the same police who worked on the the, the previous, the kidnapping, they were the same ones who came. They said, no, somebody, something is not right here. We're not leaving. We're not leaving. And then, and then they saw the light flickering. They said, somebody's here. They were about to shoot off the lock. And my daughter said she's going to go. My daughter told the, the intruder that she's going to go out to tell the police that it's a false alarm. So by this time, he had the time to go back where he came from in the attic. My daughter opened the door and she said, officer, it's a fa- false alarm. But she was pointing up to the roof. When the officer said, where is he? She was pointing up to the roof because she didn't want to say anything because this man, we don't know, he had bullets, we don't know if he had a gun. And they went up into the roof. 
and that's the end of him. Mm. I'm gonna say this, Nadine, how God works. That aside, when the police told us after everything died down, my daughter went, they took my daughter to the hospital because she fainted. She was losing too much blood. So she went to the hospital and the police said, I don't know how you got me. I don't know how the call came through because we, I just came from a raid. My phone battery died. I put it in the charge and I laid on the bed and I heard the phone ring just like that. This is new news. I never heard that part of the story. Isn't that good? That's chilling. That's the power of God at work on so many levels. Not only with that, when, when you listen to the story and you and you picture it in your mind, it, it's just God working every step of the way. Nadine, I'm telling you that I just share the story just to highlight God, mm -hmm. just to highlight God. And Nadine, God is good. After everything has died down, they could not find this man's, where he came from, right? So, of course, police, they can do their work when they want to do their work. They of can. Course. Of course. And he was from one of the most volatile area in Kingston. They found his girlfriend. His girlfriend said he got a job in Manville. He was supposed to take two other persons with him. But they were lingering. So he left them. Just imagine if there were three men. You are loved and favored, my sister. God derailed the plan. I tell you, when the God. enemy dig a pit, they fall in their own pit. There's a scripture that says, when the enemy dig a pit, they fall in the very own pit that they have dug because he came to kill and he, and he got killed. Absolutely. Even though this story took place over 12 years ago, yeah, over 16 years ago, yeah. rather. Yeah. I give God praise all over again for his divine favor over your life because you're favored. Because this is not the only story I've heard from you of how God interceded and intercepted danger. God loves you, Veronica, without a shadow of a doubt. I know. And we're here today to encourage somebody. And in wrapping up, I just want to pull something from what you said. You said when you were in that moment of helplessness, you pulled on the promises that you knew from the past. And I'm going to leave this as a word to somebody listening that a time, a storm is coming upon the world. And you can see it from your, for yourself from all the things that are coming through media that there's going to be a time of trouble where we won't even have access to the Bible. And it is for us now to start hiding God's word in our hearts, that in those moments of dread and terror and fear, we can pull on those words to bring comfort and the assurance that God will be with us through the shadow of darkness. Psalms 23, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because thou art with me. So those are the words I want to leave with you. If you want to say something very, very calm before we go, please go ahead. Yes, Nadine, I just want to say this. The story is so long and it is, there's so many intricacies that I must have left out a lot of parts. But this one particular part, because as, as I said, my main reason for sharing the story is that someone will connect with it and just trust God. The intruder, I remember when I was there talking to God, praying with God, and then, you know, I was so angry in the same breath. Remember, I was praying in my heart because my, my, my mouth was gagged. There was no, no sound could come out. The intruder came over me and said, I feel my head swelling. I hope you're not praying in a bad prayer for me. Look and at that. Nadine, I kid you not, if I had died that night, I knew that God was there. He said he was going to take us out of the house. Nadine, he could not move. He could not leave. It's like the Lord stayed him. He could not leave. The angel of the Lord encamped one about them that fear him and delivered them. The angels were present, Veronica. I'm telling you. Powerful. God is a champion. God is worthy. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, this is nothing of my doing. Nothing of the police. Yes, the police did their work. But God lined up everything that his name will be glorified and that's just what i want to do amen amen thank you so so much veronica for sharing this powerful story and I, i'll tell you this story is going to be online on youtube for some years to come and it's going to touch a lot of hearts i know it if you have doubts about the existence of god and his care for your life know today that there's a god who watches over you 
who cares about how you feel and what you go through and will send help if you ask for the help that you need. Thank you Indeed. so much for, for stopping by, Veronica. God bless you. Thank you for listening to today's episode of Reflections. Join me next week for another episode. Until then, stay blessed. <laughs>